the help of the Azeri embassy um, in Budapest, which according to some rumors was established exactly for, for this case, uh, they helped me to get into the prison and that's when I met him. It was 10 months before he was transferred. I was took up to the library of the prison and in a narrow uh, corner of the prison, like the distance between us was like what we're having now. So it's like one meter and there was a tiny table uh, between us and uh, he was sitting opposite the wall and uh, he was there in front of me and um, he didn't have any regret, that's right. Uh, but he was peaceful. He's no, he, he knew that uh, he has an occasion to talk now. What struck me first is that uh, the guy is amazingly intelligent. He's really, he's really smart. He's fluent in pff, half dozen of languages. Uh, he even translated books, uh, Hungarian books to Azeri. So I started with this uh, approach. Uh, because the book he was translating is um, is about uh, two groups of boys in, in the early 20th century Budapest who are fighting against each other. Anyway, it's a youth book which every Hungarian kid has to read in, at the age of 11 or 12. So we all know the characters of this book. And uh, there, is a, there is a good guy, the leader of the good group, uh, and I asked him who's the favorite, who is his favorite character and, and before I ended the question he, he replied that this guy is my favorite, the, the, the leader of the good boys group. In his verdict he got a life sentence because he not just killed the, uh, the Armenian officer but he wanted to, to kill another one. Armenian officer? I think it was, yes. And he openly denied it. And you know, he, he had a sentence that, you know, that he finished the first and he didn't want to kill anybody, he, he smoked a cigarette after it. So, and, and that's how the guards found him. The way it happens that, uh, that the president uh, welcomed him on, on Heydar Aliyev airport in Baku with a passport and with a, with a promotion from, uh, from uh, lieutenant to mayor, yeah. um, you know, it was, just, it was just shocking for me. And, um, and that's, that was the point when, uh, the moment when every Hungarian understood what is happening here between these two countries. Moments after the news emerged from Baku that, uh, that he was released, he was transferred and released, uh, I guess protests erupted in, uh, in Yerevan, uh, in front of the Hungarian embassy or, or consulate. And our flags were burnt and uh, I have never seen such occasion or, or event in my life. And, um, and that was the moment I understood that we shouldn't have done this. If I had an occasion, I would, I would say yes. And I had an occasion now for the second time, so I said yes. Even if I knew the consequences of entering to Artsakh. You have been blacklisted. I have been. The last time I checked, I'm number 669. These two countries have such amount of hatred towards each other, which I haven't experienced in my life. So 
I'm from Central Europe. We do have some issues with our neighbors, like our neighbors have issues with us and their neighbors. Everyone ha has issues with everyone, but uh, but uh, the vast majority of it's it's uh, fueled by politics. This is not. This is not. It is, this, this is uh, something I really. This is in people's bones, and it was really um, uh, a new experience for me that such rooted hatreds can exist because this is something like that. Fine. Okay.